Meantime, a Rolling Stone writer testifying in a defamation case over her own now retracted article detailing what was supposed to have been a gang rape in a fraternity house at the University of Virginia. It never happened. And the reporter pushing back against claims by the plaintiff's attorneys that she tailored the piece to fit a specific agenda while disregarding a lack of concrete evidence. Let's bring in our legal panel today. Ebony Williams is an attorney and Fox News contributor. Yorit Tewelda is a former prosecutor and criminal defense attorney. Uh, this defamation suit brought by a former dean still employed by the university, in fact, she's gotten a promotion, as I understand it, who said that the article named her by name, made her a villain, in effect, and that what, uh, when, when the article came out, she was left in her office crying all day by the way she was portrayed. Is that enough, Yodit? Uh, to to win her a uh, uh, damages here. Well, she definitely has grounds. Let's just start with what a journalist is supposed to do. A journalist is supposed to obtain information from all possible sources so that their investigation can be complete, truthful, and unbiased, and that just wasn't done here. So was this bad journalism? Absolutely. But the plaintiff is going to have to prove more than just bad journalism. What she's going to have to prove is that there was actual malice on the part of the magazine, which means that not only did they write false information, but they knew that that information was false. Now, the plaintiff does have have some arguments to make in that, one, there was a retraction of the article, two, the uh, accuser named Jackie stated in the deposition that she, the plaintiff, did everything right, that she not only uh, supported her, but didn't try to suppress her accusation of a sexual assault that took place. So, there, and, and there were details that were left out of this article, um, that the uh, writer knew that the plaintiff encouraged the accuser to go make a report to the police, but that was conveniently left out. Yeah. Um Ebony, the, the article um, suggested that, you know, this woman tried to squelch the story, but as, as Yodit just alluded to, she apparently, according to her own testimony, she was encouraging um, this so-called Jackie to report the thing to police. Jackie didn't want to do it, and we now know it's because it didn't happen. That's exactly right, John. And Yodit's right in, in laying out that this is absolutely a clear-cut case of bad journalism. We know that's why the story has been re retracted. But here's what's important. The, the actual malice requirement is such a hard, high burden for any plaintiff to prove in a defamation case. And it's really going to be tough here because you've got the writer offering another reason, an alternative reason, rather. Instead of malice, she's saying, the reason I didn't go further in my investigation. The reason I didn't check uh, some of these facts out by this alleged victim is because I was concerned about her well-being. And I balanced the concern for Jackie's well-being against the harm that would be caused emotionally to her if I did move forward without her consent and well wishes. And so while that's not really a, a satisfactory answer for the sloppy journalism to most people in general, it certainly does sound like a very plausible defense to a presumption around actual malice. And that makes it much harder for, for this plaintiff to prove her case. We're going to have to leave the discussion there. Discussion truncated a little bit by politics. Yeah. Yodit, Ebony, thank you very much. Thanks, John. Thanks, John.